theinterviewworld.com. Thank you much. I'm having a good time being here today. Okay, now, we're going from Ray Charles to Justin Timberlake. You have played and recorded with just about everybody. Tell me. It's what you do. I've spent 40, 45 years, and the fun of it was getting a chance to meet so many different people, playing so many different kinds of music, and learning a lot. How did you first meet Ray Charles? Actually, we lived not too far from each other. He lived on South Ridge over in Windsor Hills, and I lived on Circle View, which is about 12 blocks apart. But what had happened is I was working with a group called The Vocals, and he contacted us about being the opening act. And the reason you've never heard of the group The Vocals is because they changed their name the next year in 1965 to the fifth dimension. And this was in Los Angeles? That yeah. When you speak of living down the street? Yes, it is. Okay. It is in Los Angeles. All right. So you're an L.A. native? Yes, I am. Okay. And I understand you recorded his last album, Genius Loves Company. I'd love to hear a little, little bit about that recording session. Well, this is kind of going full circle. 1964, 65, we recorded live at the Shrine Auditorium. And then in 2004, 40 years later, we did Ray's last album, Genius Loves Company. And I was very fortunate with Randy Wallman, David Blumberg, and myself. We did an arrangement for a song, Heaven Help Us All, that he sung with Gladys Knight. And that song won the Grammy for Best Gospel Recording. And so you actually played with Ray on the recording? The fun of it was sitting together on a piano bench. Ray is thanking me for playing. I'm thanking him because a lot of what I play today, I learned directly from him. So that was as good as it gets going full circle with my mentor and friend. I'm so curious to hear a little bit about what, what it was you, you learned from him as far as playing. It's really simple. And if you listen to Ray Charles, he lived exactly what he talked about. If it doesn't feel good, don't play it. And that was basically the essence of it. What he made you understand is playing the notes is not the function. Making people feel them when you play them is the function. He brought so much music to the world yeah. and so much joy. And that's basically what the music is about. Right. Most people have started to take themselves a little too seriously. <laughs> music is just fun. Play it, make people smile, you've done your job. You're around town, that's what sets you apart, that it's definitely Clarence McDonald has a vibe. It's a spirit, that it's not just the notes. Every time you play, it's, it's something special. Oh, always music, and that's, once again, the function of music, mm -hmm. you know, is to bring the beauty out. It, music always takes you back to times. It, I think the main thing that happens when you're doing music you play a song, it takes people back to a time when something was good in their life or something dramatic in their life. Right. You know, and music is kind of like your calendar. Your de what, what happened in that decade that you remember? What happened at the time you heard a certain song? Mm -hmm. Which is the thing I enjoy because 30 or 40 years later, they're still playing songs that we recorded in 60s, 70s, and 80s, which right. lets you know they're still worth being heard. So out of, you recorded with so many people, I, the, I think the list was over two pages of, I mean, of the great, the music <laughs> greats. Um, any memorable that really pop into your mind as far as recordings that have stuck with you? Actually, there have been so many because yeah. the truth of it is, when you go into a recording session and all of a sudden you can tell that everyone has gotten spirit, mind, and music aligned, mm -hmm. you know that something electric is happening that cannot be duplicated. It's like, you know, you can't quantify this. That's why we've made a lots of records that didn't sell. The joy is knowing when you walked out of the studio, what we just did, everyone was on the same accord. And that's really what a hit record is. It's not the notes, it's not the technique. It's that magic moment when everything aligns, where the players, the singers, the string players, everyone, all are in sync and in harmony. And the end result is what most people call a hit record. So no click track. <laughs> uh, we use click tracks every now and then, but 
the best feeling you will ever get is yeah. from human beings interacting with each other, and that's not on a click. Yeah. I heard you were out um, playing and recording David T. Walker's last album. I mean, talk about a wonderful guitar stylist. One yeah. of my favorite people as a friend and as a human being. I've known David T. Walker since the 60s. In fact, we went to Japan. We recorded an album here in uh, late summer. Then we went to Japan for the release of the album in November. Had a great time. We did the um, Billboard Live and um, the Blue Notes. Okay. You know, and it's always fun in Japan because they have very good clubs, very good equipment, and very appreciative crowds. Right. And I also understand that you've taken on the role of frontman. How, how, tell, tell me about that experience after being sideman for what, 40 plus years? Well, sometimes you get into things in the strangest way. I have a friend of mine named Stu Levin who called me from Cognac, France, and he says, you better get a band together because I'm booking you for the Blues Passion Festival over here. I said, are you crazy? He says, no, you need to be playing anyway. So what started out as an idea, put a little group together and just start playing because there weren't a lots of people playing live anymore. And I felt that they needed to see what live music and how it worked between players. So it started out very small, but as it turned out, we played. And the first time we played, we ended up recording it, making a record. And people said, you should do more of it. And I had never thought about being a band leader. And now that I know what's involved, <laughs> I might should have stayed where I was. But I found out it's, at this point in my life, I'm finding something new to do in a career or a field that I've been working in for 45 years. What's the name of your group? It's Clarence McDonald and Evolution. Uh -huh. And the name Clever. Evolution is because it's always changing. Perfect an ever-evolving experience for the stage of your career. That's exactly what it is, but that's what life is supposed yeah, to be. exactly. Keep evolving. Keep growing as a musician. Um, and, and what's coming up for the band? Do you have any uh, immediate plans, or what's the focus right now? Well, we have a CD. It's called Live from Hollywood. Okay. And that's the first one. And I'm laughing about it because of all the records I've made, I finally made a record where my name is on it. And it's like a kid. It's like something you've done a hundred times before. Or it's like a dad at a football game. You see the hundred football games, but the one your kid's playing in, all of a sudden, it's different. So for me, this is a different experience. Like I said, I've heard records I've played on or written or produced on the air, and they always bring a certain joy. Now. I'm waiting for the first time mm. I hear on the air live from Hollywood. The other fun thing about it is making a live record. We've got very well produced records nowadays. Not a lot of them have a really great feel. Mm -hmm. This one has people talking, laughing, having a good time. And that's what I think people want to hear again. Right. So yeah, live with live human beings, live players. And it was so much fun because I had 40 years of friends in one room. Okay. Bill Withers and his wife, Marsha, came. Ray Parker, David T. Walker. Mm -hmm. Actually, James D. Train Williams came all the way out to L.A. just to sing one song with the group. So, okay. Marilyn McCoo, Billy Davis from the Fifth Dimension. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, I had a room full of friends. You right. can't go wrong. It sounds like great energy. Well, we'll look forward to more. I presume that we'll get get to hear some more albums in the near future. It is my intention to do one solo piano album and then I'm going to do a couple of records with the group and I've just decided to make records again yeah. well, and go out and perform them. As so after all of these years in the business do you have any sagely advice for 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 those that are kind of up and coming or, or really would yearn to learn from someone like yourself? First thing is understand that music is a business. And most importantly, when you stop liking the music, the business will get harder. So always love what you do because that's the difference between a job and a profession. I also heard uh, something that stuck with me that I had heard about you. I, someone had said, what makes you great? And, and your reply was? Repetition. 
It's what makes anyone great. If you keep doing it, you'll find something in it that makes you stand out from the rest of the crowd. But it's no magic. It's doing it over and over until your true self emerges. Well, Clarence McDonald, I presume you have been practicing a whole heck of a lot because what we hear and what we enjoy is just a true delight. So I thank you so much for being a part of interviewworld.com and we hope that we can catch up with you again soon. Thank you for having me and I've had a great time today. Thank you.